in the world. This is Jody with All True Crime ASMR. I just want to throw out a warning that this is true crime and it is of sensitive nature, so please, please watch with care. Nobody under the age of 14 and even then viewer discretion is advised. So this is the case of Tyler Davis. Very, very strange, mysterious case. A nice young couple goes out for their her birthday and it literally her husband walks away and disappears without a trace. Without a trace. So let's begin. So the day before her birthday, this young couple Brittany and Tyler, there they celebrate three days out of the year. They always celebrate her birthday, his birthday, and their anniversary. Now he works as a manager at Wendy's fast food place, and she works as a bartender part time. They have a two year old son named Aaron, who um, they had back in 2017, which was two years ago, so he's two years old. They had dropped him off with his parents, and they're off for the night to Easton Town Center in Columbus, Ohio, which is a beautiful complex. I mean, he has like 192 restaurants, 70, or, sorry, 192 shops, 75 restaurants and bars. They basically, they do not have to leave this complex to find something to do. It is pretty cool, and it's, be I didn't even know it was there, and I'm from Ohio, but um, apparently it's a fairly new complex. The couple had to say, decided to stay at the Hilton, um, which was a very nice uh, hotel, and they were excited, really, Brittany was super excited to, you know, just get out of the town, and they got really nice dressed up, and they met their friend Sean to go out, and Sean stayed with them the entire night as they went from bar to bar. Now, the couple was not rich, but they were happy. I mean, there is no reports of them having any issues in their marriage. Matter of fact, their arrangement seemed very, since 2013, so she knew him before she married him. He knew her before he married her. This is not like a shotgun wedding or anything. So, the thing is, is that they're out till midnight, and then East, Easton Complex actually closes down, so they go to this gentleman's club called the Doll House, and this is, you know, a gentleman's club, but a lot of, you know, people don't want to stop drinking or having fun at midnight, so they head out to, um, you know, a, another club, an after-hours club, or a party, or, you know, a gentleman's club. So while they were there, they had a great time. I mean, everything was fine. But um, she had to go use the restroom before she left. And the bouncers at the bar were just harassing Tyler and Sean to leave. Like, leave Brittany. They're like, no, you know, that's my wife. She's in the bathroom. And I found that very a strange piece of evidence. So they get into an Uber and they go back to John. Tyler is passing out in the cab and Sean and Brittany are trying to keep him awake, saying, you know, what's wrong? You know, are you all right? Are you all right? And he, and he's just like, let me sleep, let me sleep. So he apparently, you know, dozes off. They get to the hotel and Sean wakes up in the Uber and starts getting irritated and annoyed and says, this is not where I'm supposed to be. No, I, no, I'm in the wrong place. We're in the wrong place. We're, we're not supposed to be here. And literally is having this breakdown that Brittany is like, what is going on? Everything was great. They, I mean, just went from bar to bar having a great time. It's almost, in my opinion, like somebody had drugged him at the dollhouse and this is a resulting effect of it. So she's like, look, I have to pee really bad. I want to go back to the hotel room and plug my phone in. It's almost dead, you know, in case somebody calls about Aaron. You know, I want to make sure.
make sure he's okay. Um, you know, I just, uh, every mother needs a charged phone, okay? <laughs> it's just how it is. So, especially if you're out. And he said, you know, uh, I just need to cool off. I just need a walk. I just need a walk. I need to cool off. So, Brittany says, John, send Sean after him. And John's like, look, I'll take care of him. I'll watch over him, make sure he doesn't hurt himself. Because obviously something was not right with her husband. I mean, she knew him well enough to know that. So the weird thing is, is that this is when things start getting really strange. She goes up to the hotel room and she sits there and she waits. And she's expecting her husband back any moment, right? And if he doesn't come back, then at, at 4, at about 3.37, he called Brittany and he said, I'm five minutes away, I'll be right back, I swear. So there was no texts that were negative to her. There were no signs that they had been fighting. It was just like he was not in his right mind and he needed to walk it off. There are GPS accounts that Tyler was actually at the bank a mile away by foot, which isn't that far from, you know, if he was driving, but by foot that, you know, that's pretty far. But so he should have been sobering up at this time. You know, in February in Ohio, it's cold. Um, you know, the worry that he, he's going to have uh, get hyperthermia is definitely a concern, a real concern. So then he called her back at 410, and he said, again, he was in the woods, which is a very small piece of woods, and then a couple little, you know, pools of water, and then at 270. So, being from Ohio, I know exactly what it looks like, and there's like probably a, a little ledge where the cement and the the um, a parking lot meet, and then there's a wooded area, which is at this point would have no, you know, no leaves on the trees or anything. It would be very easy to see him, and she couldn't sleep. She was pacing. She was like, "What in the world?" And he said he'd be there in five minutes. Two minutes later, after four fifteen, the phone rang again. It was Tyler's phone. When she answered this time, she only heard a few seconds of empty air when the phone cut off. She tried Tyler back numerous times, but at this point, this phone had either it was off or dead. At 4.30 a.m., Sean said he was going to head home. He lived just 10 minutes from Easton shopping area, but that is kind of strange. Like, you're leaving your best friend's wife there after you still haven't come back. She's scared to death. She's by herself in this hotel room, and her husband is still missing. I find that very strange that he just was like, I'm going home. I mean, maybe he was tired. Maybe he was tired. Maybe they got to a fight. And he had pushed him away, and it pissed John off. I get that. And he figured I'd come back the next morning, but he didn't. He never came back to look for Jean because she didn't want to call his parents. She was calling all of their friends, and she was panicking and advising what to do. Her friend said, calm down. He's probably just drunk. He needs to walk it off. He fell asleep probably either um, on a bench or something, but that was still a concern for her because of hypothermia. It was cold and wet in Ohio. So she called her former roommate, which lived in Columbus, and he said that he would show up and they would go, go off and search for Tyler because, I mean, literally, Sean just left her, left her instead of a certain certainly logical since he had been drinking all night. However, February in Ohio is exactly warm. So they looked all over town center. I mean, these two, at least he was nice enough to come over and help her. I mean, they looked all over and there was no sign of Tyler. Finally, at 10.30 a.m. the next morning on her birthday, Brittany called Tyler's parents and then called the police to report him missing. At this point, I would have called security at the hotel and had, you know, those people help me because, and I'd, I probably had told everybody by now, you know, if I had lost my husband or my daughter or whomever I was close to, that this is not normal behavior. He got out of the car angry and, you know, all of 
sudden this bizarre mood that Ed, he had not been in all night. They were having a great time. That is, you know, if it was normal for him to change personalities like then, that, then she wouldn't have found it so strange. I mean, she was terrified to call his parents because, of course, parents are going to think the worst and she did not want to worry him, worry them. Um, and, you know, she was, she was really upset at this point, but she was at her last option. She had already called the hospitals, all the jails, and was getting nowhere. The police show up at 12.30 p.m. She met with the officers in the parking lot, but of course, guess what? He's an adult. He's allowed to walk away from his family, his home, his life, his job, whatever he wants. He is an adult. Which is kind of frustrating when you know this is not somebody's normal behavior, but it does happen a lot. People just get tired of the life and they walk away. Even if there are no signs prior, it does happen. So they have to wait 72 hours. Well, she's not going to wait. She's going to look for Tyler. So she's still looking. She calls his parents. At 5 p.m., Tyler's dad told Brittany to go back and get her son, and they would keep looking. Brittany also repeatedly said the detective wasn't very forthcoming with her and wasn't very nice to her during their initial conversations, basically thinking that she had done something to him. But we know that's not true later on when they see that the texts are exactly what Brittany says. Now, they had waited and waited to look for the security footage, right? And they see Tyler, quote unquote, Tyler come out of the woods, but it wasn't Tyler. It was Sean. Tyler never came out of those woods. But he said he could see the lights at the hotel. He could see the hotel. He was going to be there in five minutes. So what happened? So they sent out. Um, so then they sent out dogs and they sent out, you know, a search party. They looked through this small, it's a small wooded area that he would have gone into and the water and then 270. I mean, you know, she said probably when she and Sean were walking back and forth up and down looking for Tyler, the cops conducted their first official search on Tuesday, February 26th. So Sean does not show back up into the picture until Tuesday, February 26th. I think it's strange that Sean <coughs> did not come back right away. Afterward, they called Brittany and let her know they searched some bodies of water in some woods concentrated in the area where his phone pinged. However, his phone was never searched or never found. His wallet, his license, his body, nothing was ever found. They, they brought out search dogs. The dogs hit on the area of one of the ponds. The police have said all the nearby bodies of water have been searched multiple times. There were zero, zero signs of poor Tyler. The police do obtain some records from Tyler's phone and found some interesting clues. They do verify Brittany's phone calls. They also find a record of him searching his Google Maps. Now, he is searching for his way back to Easton, which tells me that he is looking to get back to Brittany. He's not looking to run away from the area. He's not looking to go off and live a new life. He just wanted to get back to his hotel room. Um, so why didn't he? At first, the police don't release much information. Most people on social media and the community find flaws in Brittany's story. Everybody wants to find something wrong, right? So, it's strange. He did indeed walk away alone through, you know, through the Huntington Bank, which is close by, a mile walk, like we had talked about earlier, on Seltzer Road, and then asked his phone for directions. They can also tell via the phone GPS records that he was nearby the Abbott Labs complex at one point. While not far via a car ride, it's at least a mile away from the Hilton Easton. The police also didn't release the 
name of the friend Sean Hughes right away. So a lot of initial speculation was centered around Sean and Brittany. There was a dispute. Okay, so was there a dispute between them? This is what I'm thinking. It's like, was there a dispute between them? And Sean was like, get away from me. Just, you know, I need to think. You know, you're being ridiculous. Or, you know, he was so messed up in the mind because he had been drugged to the club. You know, the reason why the bouncers wanted to get them out so quickly. Um, that they wouldn't even let him wait for their, his wife to get out of the bathroom. What were they planning on doing to her? Maybe that was the whole thing. I don't know. You know, we really won't know that. So. And the question is, why did Tyler need to go from napping in the Uber on the way home to clearing his head walking around the complex? He obviously wasn't feeling well. He, he wasn't feeling in his right mind. He didn't believe the Uber driver when they said, we're here. And he's like, no, this is not where I'm supposed to be. Nothing seems to add up. And it's confusing that, you know, he can be verified for walking away alone on foot. Um, and he did call Brittany a few times before disappearing. So here's the thing is that there's nothing nasty said. There. I mean, he's just like, hey, babe, you know, I'll be there in five minutes, five minutes, five minutes. I can see the hotel. That is not a sign of an angry husband. Sean supposedly left at 4.30 a.m. to go home. Brindley was obviously upset and said she never slept all night looking for Tyler and calling people for help. Why did Sean leave her like this? And why wasn't he more worried about Tyler? There are also names that brought up in the days afterward as people searched for him, friends, family, and even some of his employees from Wendy's. But Sean's name is never mentioned as being there at all. At all. Now, that is strange because he spent the entire night from beginning to end with, these, with this couple. He only lived ten minutes away, and this is a good friend. Quote, unquote. Should he be all over, shouldn't he be all over this search? I mean, if this is your best friend, and you, I understand you need to go home, you're like pissed at him a little bit, whatever, but the next morning, why wouldn't you get up or stay in the hotel or, you know, get a room next to hers? And if you can afford it, sleep on the couch or, you know, maybe have, you know, them change the room so they could both have their own bed. I mean, there's a million things they could have done where Tyler wouldn't leave her alone, where she had to call another friend to help her search. I mean, Brittany searched all night, all night. A lot of people were picking apart Brittany's stories and her interviews, but what about Sean? Of course, it is possible he was drunk and stumbled off and had an accident, but then the police would have definitely found his body. Um, now, they think that maybe he got into a dumpster and then you know, his body, he was crushed and he was taken to the local, you know, sanitary plant. However, searches and searches and dumpsters were done in the next, you know, the next day. No sign of Tyler, wallet, no phone, nothing. It seems the story has a lot more theories than it does evidence. I completely agree. Easton is a very built up populated area, certainly no evidently heavily wooded areas. Wooded, wooded, wooded areas. This is, however, a small patch of woods about a block away that is a barrier between Seltzer Road and I-270. There are also two small bodies of water on the sides of the trees. But here's the thing. They were all searched multiple times. So why in the world, if his body was in there, why wasn't he found? And if the cadaver dogs had hit on something, in that one pond, and they searched right then and there, and nothing, that means somebody had moved the body. I mean, it would not be an easy area to cover up a body, let's just say that. Unfortunate that we don't have more surveillance footage considering the hundreds of businesses that were there, but Eastern is built up to be 
be very nice and park-like. Many shrubs and landscaping shield the sidewalks from the stores. So even if he did walk by the sidewalk, it might never be picked up on camera. So what are the theories in this case? Theory number one. Tyler walked away. And this is literally theory number one. Tyler walked away and had an accident or even succumbed to the elements. But then they would have found his body. He was drunk and there isn't exactly any evidence pointing to foul play. And it's been known to happen. I think it's quite odd that no sign of him has surfaced. However, I mean, even if he had an accident and fell somewhere, you'd think someone would have found his body. Something. His wallet, his phone, his shoes, something. Also, he first called Brittany at 337 while he was out walking. She heard him again just after 4 o'clock. How far, how far could he have gotten in 10 minutes, or 20 minutes, basically? He might have been more than a mile away from the hotel at that point. And yes, he did say he could see the hotel during his last call. But was it really the hotel? And my question, was it really Tyler? Was it really Tyler? I mean, Tyler seemed to be, you know, not in his right mind. You know, if Brittany thinks about it, could it have been somebody else acting as Tyler? I don't know. That's just a th something I'm throwing in. It's not in this theory. I'm just questioning that. So theory two, Tyler fell victim to foul play. Was he taken out of the area? Is that why there has been so little evidence recovered? And did he meet foul play at the hands of a stranger, even more sinister, someone he knew? In a lot of cases, we also talk about people walking away and starting a new life. But Okay, nothing says that to me. Why would he keep promising his wife he'd be back in five minutes and five minutes? His parents were watching his kid. I mean, nothing says, I'm leaving forever, bye-bye. It just doesn't. If he was so close to his parents, why would he leave his parents? Okay, he wanted to leave his wife. At the very worst, he would have killed his wife. I mean, he wouldn't have left his whole family. But he didn't. He kept telling her, I'll be back, I'll be back. But I'm still thinking, it was that really him at the time? Or was he in distress, just calling her to reassure her so she wouldn't come looking for him because he was still around the hotel? Um, but why disappear and where? These are some same reasons. I don't believe suicide. Yeah, suicide, I do not believe is a theory. The only surveillance footage showing Tyler walking away from the Hilton, we have a fair amount of data on, on the night he went missing. Meanwhile, a timeline we can follow at least to a certain point, and then nothing, absolutely nothing. His phone stops pinging. His friend comes back and leaves and goes home. Tyler Davis is described as Caucasian male, 5'9". 175 to 195 pounds. He was last seen wearing a green and blue flannel shirt, a white t-shirt, blue jeans, and older Nike sneaky shoe, sneak, Nike sneakers. So he has brown hair and brown eyes. Tyler also has a prominent red birthmark on his right arm that extends um, to his neck and chest. If you have any information, and this is important, listen up closely. Get a piece of paper. I want you to write this down. Even if you know, if you saw, if you heard anything from that night, you were in the area, please call. Are you ready? Get a bed. If you have any information on Tyler Davis or somebody that might look like him, and I'll put up pictures, please call Columbus Police Department. The Columbus Police Department at 614-645-4545. That number again is 614-645-4545. And that is the Columbus Police Department. So, if you have theories, I'd love to hear about them. I don't think that Tyler, I don't think that Tyler just left on his own. I think that something happened. I think that that his wife was
was not involved. She was so panicked. I think his friend was involved, though. I really do. I don't think it's normal that your best friend disappears and you leave his wife just sitting there. And you leave his wife just sitting there by herself for hours in a hotel that that she is not familiar with. She lives three hours away. I mean, it, it, this doesn't make any sense. So, good afternoon, great morning, wherever you are in the world, and I wish you well. Thank you for the subscribers, for the views, for the likes, for the comments, for the recommendation. Thank you for recommending this case to me. I appreciate everything that you all have done to keep my channel, get my channel really going. It's something I've always wanted to do, and I feel like I'm doing a little bit of good each time. So, I've changed back to my normal old um, microphone. I guess I'm going to use my other ones for when I get to um, receivers, and I'll have one on each side, so one will not black out one of the sides. I'm sorry, that was terrible. I didn't, I didn't know it did that, but it was already posted, and things happen, you know, I am human. So, have a good evening, or night. Yeah.